I've been wanting to hit a ball further than the baseball distance record for quite a while. In another video, I made this explosive bat, which had all the right ingredients to do it. It would just constantly break when I pushed it to higher powers. I was only able to reliably hit a ball about 350 feet, which is a major league home run, but it's not setting any records. That's just unacceptable. Allow me to introduce Explosive Bat V2 and Explosive Bat V3, which is a double barrel, 50 caliber baseball bat. It's powered by 27 caliber rifle blanks. I don't really see a reason why this wouldn't be regulation. This is the type of thing where you do it once and they make a rule just for you. This bat is insane. And for the first time, we're gonna get to see some awesome slow-mo of how it works. And finally, firing the wooden bat with three shells. So 575 feet. That's the longest verified home run. 575 feet is all the way out of the stadium. I've also decided that it only counts if I swing the bat for real. Going into this, I was thinking, oh, this is gonna be easy. But as I got into the math, it turns out 575 feet is really hard. The forces involved are insane. This is what happens to my wooden bat when you try to fire it with three shells. More on that later. I'm right up against the edge of what's possible. And just in making this thing, I crossed over that edge over and over and over. But through those fires and flames emerged something really cool. I'm not sure what to call it though. Explosive Bat V2 is such a mouthful. Let's just call it the 50. I like how that sounds. After my last bat video, about 200 million people said I should do three shells. So I know it's disappointing. Everyone wanted me to do three shells, but I didn't. I did four, which is one more. So let me break down my plan for beating the record. So for step one, I'm gonna hit the ball really, really hard. That's about it. I'm gonna need a much stronger bat. Oh, this is perfect. So like I said, this bat is gonna be powered by 27 caliber blanks. These are normally used for driving long nails into solid concrete and steel. I took this opportunity to totally rethink the bat. I've been obsessed with the idea of giving the bat just the tiniest tap and still hitting a home run. I call it the four gun salute. The entire end of the bat moves and it has four individual firing mechanisms which actuate this four bar linkage. The force of the ball hitting the bat will fire all the shells. My new bat is so much easier to load than my old one. You just open the breech, load in your shells up to four, which is pretty scary actually, and check this out. Oh yeah, I am so excited about this. All right, let's put it to the test. I have my stand which lets me drop a ball onto a bat so I can try it out without putting myself in danger. It was this exact moment I realized I majorly screwed up. This bat is so much worse than my last one. It would probably break my wrists, which is a little scary. And check this out. I'm so not excited about this bat. It's too bad this thing is a complete piece of garbage because there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about if it had worked. I'm especially not gonna get into the benefits of four separate firing mechanisms or the 12 iterations of the firing pins before I could finally get it to fire reliably. There's a really basic physics problem. For this to get launched up really fast and hard, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction forcing the handle down. Th this also generates a twisting force, which is what snapped the welds. And because my hands are also bolted to the bat, they'll also get twisted and snapped. That's a problem. I should have done more engineering analysis, but I just wanted it too much, and I thought maybe for once I'd be able to full nature, but it never works. Good night, sweet prince. I started an entirely new design from the ground up. This is the way I should have done it from the beginning. And the basic idea is that I'm going to take a slice out of an aluminum bat and put this firing mechanism in there. And what will happen is when a baseball hits the top, this piece moves. It will fire the shells and then fly out super fast, launching the baseball. So here's what goes on inside the bat. If we peel back the outer layer of the steel, it's kind of complicated looking. There's an assembly that can move like this. On this assembly, there's two firing pins here and here. And there's some blank cartridges down here. So when a ball comes in and hits this plate, this mechanism will move down and these firing pins will set off these cartridges, which will release a ton of gas, which will shoot down this tube and then up these two tubes. That'll shoot these up super fast because the pressure is really, really high. And that will send the ball flying. When this flying piston gets to about here, these rods will come into contact with these blue springs 
they're super, super stiff springs. And then they'll start to compress them, which will slow this piston down so that it doesn't shoot out. I'm just gonna give you a little taste of what it was like to make this. It was pretty intense, a lot of machining. Almost everything was machined, which means lots of tools, some of which gave me some really annoying problems. This is the most complicated part, the chamber. The pistons are a very precise fit, as is the seal on the bottom that connects the chambers. Probably 90% of the time on this project was machining parts. It just feels morally wrong to be doing this to a bat. Kind of felt good too though. This is how I mount everything to the bat with these welded on caps. I had some heat treated parts because they need to be very hard so they don't deform. There's the firing pins. Hopefully you can now go make my bat, except don't. I think it goes without saying, but don't try this at home. I know I sometimes pretend to be careless for laughs, but this is really serious business. I do an enormous amount of precautions from engineering analysis, to testing, to wearing body armor. And it's no joke, doing this could kill you. So just live vicariously through me and don't do it. All right, let's give it a shot. So this is exactly what I was afraid was going to happen. It blew the piston out of the bat and it also broke the test stand. I found the piece of the test stand. Hey, what was that noise? What noise? This is a good point to talk about the hard parts of this design. There were two really big, really important problems to get right. The first and most important was how do I keep this thing from exploding in my face from the extreme pressures of detonating these cartridges? This is particularly important because I plan on holding this bat. Surviving these insane pressures is one of the reasons I have two smaller bores instead of one big one. You can think about the pressure and the bores pushing out in every direction. And the worst thing that the pressure does is it tries to split this in half. So you think of all the pressure acting along this surface, it adds up to trying to pull the whole thing apart. So the material's having to pull itself together to keep it from getting ripped apart. And as this hole gets bigger, the forces trying to rip the material in half also get bigger. And the only way I can make it not go pop as I do that is to make these walls thicker and thicker. So I want the holes to be smaller, but the problem is as the holes get smaller, the force pushing the pistons out also gets smaller. So it's a very delicate balancing act to go as small as I can while still getting the acceleration and force to launch the ball that I need. By the way, this phenomena of ripping the material apart is called hoop stress. And it's the main thing that sets the thickness of propane tanks and pipes and stuff like that. Having two bores also keeps things from twisting and it distributes the force so the pushing plate can be wider without bending. The second big challenge with this bat is that the moving end will be going up to 200 miles per hour if it works. And my preference is to not shoot it out with the ball. So I have to stop it with stop rods, which compress these really stiff springs at the end of travel. And the force generated by this is unreal. So for my bat, the forces are going to be up to 6,000 pounds to stop the piston. And it's all gonna go straight into these stop rods and springs. That's three tons. That's almost the combined weight of both my cars. And that's normally what you apply to a steel rod when you snap it in half. I think these stop rods broke because I used a higher carbon steel, which hardened when I welded it. I made some with better steel. Let's try them. Looks good. Let's try two shells. <sighs> Welcome to hell. Let me make things lighter to reduce the force. That made things worse. Let's try forged rods. Oops, I didn't realize my dog was down here. Also, they didn't work. Let's try different springs. Hey, something different. We didn't just break the rods, I also broke the back. Alright, I've got better welds, better springs, high grade steel, indestructible stops. Oh, finally! This thing has so much power, I love it. Here's the knife edge that I'm walking. I need these pistons to accelerate for as long as possible. The longer they accelerate, the faster they go. As soon as they hit the springs, they start slowing down and that sets the top speed. I want the springs to be as short as possible so I get the maximum travel before I begin braking. But if the springs are too short, then my deceleration will be very harsh, which will snap the stop rods. This is why the ball goes faster when the stop rods break. There's no springs to slow it down, so it gets to accelerate longer. Have you ever wondered how to touch your wrist with all 10 fingers at the same time? It's really easy. Just have the bat go off while you're pushing like this. Here's what I came up with to keep my fingers safe. I've got the pusher. If the system blows, there's no appendages in the path and there's no loops around my fingers to deglove them. 
If you don't know what degloving is, don't look it up. Even more important is its clip-on safety. Amongst friends, it's referred to as the safety boy. It clips onto the pistons and completely blocks the firing pins. It stays in the bat until it's ready to be used. That way, if you drop the bat or something, nothing happens. This is how I keep my fingers pointing the right way. So I think it's time for me to test this thing. And I'm a bit worried about the kick. I mean, just look at how it's slamming the wood. But I don't know how I'm gonna get more information than I already have, so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not scared. I mean, seriously, what do I have to be scared of? Look, I'm not scared. Why would I be scared? It's totally fine. It's a little cold down here. Oh, wow. This bat feels awesome. There's very little kick, actually. It looks like I'm getting about 75 to 100 miles per hour off the tee with one shell, which is a real improvement over the previous bat. All right, let's see how far we can hit outside. Looks like I'm getting about 300 feet off one cartridge. Let's see how two does. That was a terrible hit, and that was really loud. It sounded like a gun. That sound was the dying breath of the breach. The breech is a piece of steel that sits behind the shells and it keeps them from popping out of the chamber when you fire them. The pressure of firing them wants to shoot them out really hard. And I didn't feel like properly designing this part so I did the old engineering trick of just making it out of thick steel. And that usually works. This is the first time that's ever failed me. So to fit any more steel in here I'm going to have to redesign and remake this top end. I hate doing things the right way but it, there's no way it's going to survive at three and four shells if I don't do this. All right, new design for the top piece made and machined. It lets me have a solid half inch steel breech. I did my homework this time and this should definitely probably not bend. It is now 5 a.m. and this is the only time I can attempt a five or 600 foot hit at this field because I don't want to worry about 600 foot foul balls and people. So this totally sucks. I take one hit and the bat broke. It was also the wimpiest hit ever. It went like 10 feet. I think you can see the ball right there. Oh man, the damage is worse than I thought. So here's what I think happened. A ball came in and just barely hit the corner or edge or something, which was enough to fire the system. As the system started moving, it just kind of pushed the ball to the side and then it was free to shoot out like a rocket. This made it slam into the stop springs much harder. So they were pulling down super hard this way, which bent it into this very annoying potato chip shape. I would really strongly prefer it not bend in half like this whenever I have a bad hit, so that means I get to redesign and rebuild the top end again. I think you know the drill at this point. I've made so many of these. Overall, I've made more than 100 custom machine parts for these bats. I hope I can get this working, because it would be a huge waste of time. Although, let's be real, it's a waste of time anyway. All right, we're going all the way to four shells just to see what happens. One shell, piece of cake as always. Here's two, looking good. I haven't done three yet because it keeps breaking, but it's surviving many wow. times in a row. This is fantastic. Now four. Oh my gosh. The power is unbelievable, but unfortunately, yeah, it broke. But just look at that kick. Oh man, I really want to fire this. Four shells shattered my grade 12.9 bolts, which is good. That means I'm getting a lot more force than I thought I was. Where did the screw heads go? Found them. Man, those must have gone flying. And then I had kind of a big brain moment, which is I'm putting all this effort into making these stop rods not break, but the stop rods can't break if there are no stop rods, right? All right, it's time to pull out all the stops. This bypasses the muffler and makes it so much more satisfying to use. A good friend is letting me use his property and this is really important because of the whole no stop rod situation. I'd prefer the piston not go flying 600 feet so I've tied it to this bucket with Kevlar line. It's like a little parachute. Here's how far the ball goes without any charges. <laughs> so we did a little horsing around with one shell and then we gave it three. That was pretty good. Yeah, you can say that again. That was pretty good. So they're claiming the ball went all the way over the trees into the neighbor's yard, which is incredible. There it is. 708 feet. But it only counts if I swing it, so time to get suited up and give it a whack. 
Foul ball. The foul ball was actually my piston flying into the woods. So you know what that means. I get to remake it. 710 feet is incredible. And it totally obliterated Babe Ruth's record. And it made me realize I'm really close to breaking another record. There are these guys down in Alabama, I think. Some guy named Dusty or something. They made this bat spinning machine that was hitting the ball, they say, 720 feet. I think I can beat that if I can tune the system. The problem I'm having is I can't see what's going on, and... What are you, we've been planning this for weeks, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Let's go do it. This is like holding a Ferrari. <laughs> well, well, let's combine our powers and uh, let's just do awesome things. So we're using Destin's high-speed camera to figure out what's actually going on and then use that knowledge to do even more awesome things. <laughs> oh yeah, like cheap Chinese fireworks is what that smells like. All right, the first real hit. Really cool, you can see the stop springs bouncing. And this is not how I expected the ball to interact with the bat. It's more like launching it. So a normal collision is like 500 microseconds or something. This is three, three and a half milliseconds of contact. It's an eternity. There are organisms that lived and died in that amount of time. The thing I was most excited to see was four shells destroying everything. That was really cool, but where was the destruction? Oh, there it is. Destroyed the stop springs. I know where to get some destruction. Let's hit the wooden bat. Three, two, one. Wait, we gave another countdown. Oh Sorry. my gosh, it dude, got, come on, it dude. Got stuck. All right. Oh, golly. It's like by a thread. Three, two, one. Okay. One. I am so glad I didn't try swinging this bat with three shells. That's the first time you fired three in the bat? Yeah. Really? That's why I didn't fire three in the bat, so I, was, I, had, a, I had a good feeling that this is what was going to happen. <laughs> this video is already too long for me to get into the weeds of all the stuff we saw and everything we learned, but a lot of cool stuff. Destin is going to be making a video going more into the weeds that I'm just glossing over here. So you should check it out on Smarter Every Day if you are one of the three people who doesn't know what that is. He's diving into the details of what happens when a ball hits the bat. It's not really a bounce. It's weird. When I first met Destin, it just did not compute. I was like, how can someone be this nice and cool? Something's off here. What is he really up to? But it turns out that's just how he really is. So go check out his stuff and you're not going to regret it. The last thing I really wanted to see is four shells with no stops. That's pretty cool. <laughs> My people have called me. Yeah. Holy cow. We're out here trying to beat Babe Ruth's record and Destin's record by hand. It is difficult because I am not very good at swinging a bat, which the high speed makes extremely clear. I, I think the technical term for this is loft. Have you heard of that term? No. It stands for, watch, I'll show you right here which stands for lack of freaking talent. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm terrified of this thing. I am too. Mostly yeah, because I know gonna, the guy that made it. Because you know it's gonna <laughs> crush your record. Oh, oh is okay. that what we're doing? <laughs> no. We're in the smack talk area now? <laughs> yeah, you're pretty well, tough I, I when you got body armor I on. I see why you'd be afraid of it. <laughs> we got a couple all right hits. Then we got this hit which flew forever. And then, this quad was about 50 milliseconds from getting completely pulverized, which would have been awesome. The control system on these quads is just unbelievable. How this didn't crash is just spectacular. So this hit looked amazing. It was flying over the trees. It looked at least as good as the other 700 footer. Unfortunately, we don't have a camera behind me because Destin was too busy trying to crash my quad and dealing with the high speed, and I was too busy trying not to die. We did see where it went. The only problem is it landed in this field. This is like finding a spherical needle in the world's largest haystack. I searched with the quad. I searched on foot. 
I searched for hours. And I thought for sure this was it. That's some stupid mushroom. If the bat was still working, I would destroy this mushroom. Been out here for three, four hours. This is the ball that's just not meant to be found. I'm 99% sure I broke Babe Ruth's record because it went over the road, which is right at the record line. But did I beat Destin? I just don't know. And it's bugging me. You can come to Alabama. Would you consider that? If we can fire the uh, supersonic baseball cannon at it. Well, yeah, duh. What were you, I mean, like, what were you even talking about? I mean, just think about it. Mad Batter. This. Plus this, plus supersonic baseball cannon. All at the same time. Yeah, we should do that. What happened? We italicized it. Oh, dude. So we have the letter pi now. Yeah. Are we done? Unless we can find the other one. I just realized that this would be so easy to turn into a golf club. Let me know if you think that'd be worth doing. <laughs> These videos are very costly to make and take an enormous amount of time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and it also helps you out because you'll be in the loop when I post new stuff. If you'd like to support these videos directly, you can check out my Patreon. And the final way you can help out is by checking out any video sponsors. Here's the part where I tell you about this video sponsor, KiwiCo. I think a lot of you are gonna actually really like this. It's a good thing. The number one question I get asked is, where did I learn to do all the things required to build my projects? And my answer kind of surprises people because I think they expect me to tell them what college I went to. The truth is a lot of what I know how to do, most of it, I learned outside of school. And in fact, it started when I was about four years old or so. My dad is awesome and he gave me all kinds of opportunities to get my hands dirty and build things and make things. For example, when I was five, he gave me this kit, which is just some components and a board and a soldering iron. And he said, go to town and make it. And then he left me alone in the garage. I, I think he remembers a bit more supervision, but nah. And these were incredibly formative experiences that gave me confidence and abilities to then make more and more complicated things as I got older. I was even making videos about them. This is my energy efficient house proposal from I think the third grade. I think my video skills have gotten better, but you can be the judge. KiwiCo is a service that sends you a project crate every month with everything that you need to make it. It's like a steady drip of self-directed hands-on learning. So what I'm about to tell you may shock you. I have a kid, a daughter to be exact. She's still a little bit young for the hydraulic claw, but I think she could be there any day. What do you think will happen if I put the big syringe in instead of the little one? Exactly. Maybe she's not into mechanical engineering. That's fine. There's eight different lines for different age groups and interests. Not only are the instructions top notch, but there's an entire magazine made for every single project that breaks down what's going on, it draws connections to the real world, and then there's a bunch of different projects like building a hydraulic elevator. The fact that you have all the pieces to build other projects is so cool. I attached my welder to the end of this arm and I almost welded. It's awesome. Can you imagine the amount of skill you would develop from a couple years of building projects like this every month? And the world needs more scientists and engineers and just people who know how to get their hands dirty and make and fix things. I can tell you from experience, the best thing you can do to expand your kid's mind and get them comfortable with technology is to give them hands-on learning with kits like these. So whether it's for your kids, a relative, or honestly yourself, give the gift of knowledge and bask in the joy of knowing you gave a gift that's gonna have long-term value and leave a mark. I'm super grateful to have been exposed to this type of stuff growing up. Go to kiwico.com slash stuff made here and you'll get 50% off your first crate. And don't forget the holiday season is this close and these make really good gifts. Not only do they not rot the brain, it keeps giving all year long, so that's pretty cool. If you do this, you can also feel good because it helps support me and the channel and it enables me to build increasingly bizarre and insane things. So thank you for that.